Mini Wargaming Dan here from miniwargaming.com here to share some uh, tactica on war bikes. These guys are awesome and they're super fast. They oh no, the rider fell off. Where'd he go? <clears throat> That's the thing about war bikes that they really don't they don't really don't drive their bike so much. They don't really they they more ride their bikes as in like they're kind of like just. They're on the bike just to go fast. Just to get up in the face. So you read the fluff in the Kodax, it's hilarious about you know throwing up digits as they're flying past. <laughs> other, other guys just going into combat, just getting in there first. It's the pride of the evil sons to just be able to go in there and hit everyone first before anyone else can. Now, with bikes, it's a bit counterintuitive because orcs, usually you just run up, smash, run up, smash. But as I previously talked with the Storm Boys, you have to just hold back a little bit and just attack when the top opportunity is right. With war bikers, that's even more important. <clears throat> now, war bikers are obviously a lot stronger. They're on a bike. <clears throat> Excuse me. They have a four plus save, like an armor save, which is ridiculous compared to a normal normal boy. You know, your normal t-shirt save to you know 50 50 chance that you're gonna stay alive if you get hit. But what's even more awesome about war bikes is that they have noxious fumes coming up. What's the, what's the rule name for it? It's uh, exhaust cloud. All right, so anywhere they're on the board, anywhere, they always get a cover save, four up cover save. And so you can be a lot more liberal with them in how you move them because you don't have to hug terrain so much. You can go out in the open and people are reluctant to shoot at you even though you're up in their face. <clears throat> also, because you get a five toughness, you, I mean, you get increased toughness, and so it's even harder to wound you. Now, granted, they still only have one wound each. They can die quite fast if you just shell out enough wounds into them, and so you don't want to be just willy-nilly throwing them around. But their strength is in their DACA cannons. They have twin-length DACA cannons on either side of their bike, or you know, or double on one side, or whatever you want to model them. And they just—they just do so much damage. They—I <clears throat> I mean, Ludas are good. Ludas can shoot tons of damage, but war bikes, I think, might do more damage, just be more reliably. As long as you, as long as you keep them out of combat. Now they do have a foot and a half range, okay, and so only jump infantry, or maybe like a like assault infantry or like in vehicles with like open top vehicles or you know out of a land raider or something only those type of units can reach you in combat and so you can skirt and once you like it takes a little while but you can just judge when you're like perfectly within that 18 inch range i mean you have as long as you're not within a foot so they can move up and charge you you have to keep back a little bit more because they can just shell out tons of shots and with a twin linked with because ballistic skill is so terrible i mean you're hitting on fives and sixes but when you get to re-roll that so you get another third chance, it's, I can't do the math hammer in my head, but it's a lot bigger chance you're going to hit with a lot more shots. So twin length is just fantastic. One of the few things in the Orc Codex that is twin length. Because normally we just bring in huge numbers. And so bikes, there's, there's a few ways to field them because there's a very wide berth of like, it's, you can bring 3 to 12. That's a huge gap there. It's like, where, where do I decide where to cut it off? Now we're going to start with a squad of just three, three uh, bikes. Though when you bring three, it's more, they're kind of like, an, you can either use them as like an assassination squad or like a distraction. Now, if it's more of an assassinating squad, it's, you want to bring a power claw and a boss pull just in case, you know, if one of them loses, it's worth the five points just to get them. You're spending enough points on them already. And so, <clears throat> more to assassinate vehicles, not, not units, because in combat, I mean, the knob with the power claw boss pull is the same as, you know, a normal boy, the normal knob, so he's, he's fine, except, you know, the plus one toughness, which is cool. But the other boys in combat, they're the same as shooter boys, except, you know, they have that save and increased toughness. But the amount of damage they can deal, how many wounds they can shell out, is the same as just a regular shooter boy. So not, I mean, Decent, but when you only have like two of them with your knob, not really that much at all. And so unless it's a squad that is terrible in close combat, 
You want to avoid close combat with them with, with any kind of bike. Unless, of course, you have enough. And that includes, like, you know, when you take bigger squads of bikes, just, if, just think to yourself, if a normal squad of shooter boys would assault this and I'd be happy with the results, then I would charge in. If not, stay back and shoot. Unless an awful, awful thing is going to happen. Obviously, there's exceptions if you want to tie them up in combat or they're even better at shooting than they are at close combat, then just charge them in. So just, you have that um, liberty. You know, you can choose. But oftentimes, it's going to be sitting back and shooting. More often than that. Because you're, you're usually going to take a little bit smaller squads. But so with a squad of three, charge in. You can kill tanks with a power claw. I mean, you just run around and you can turbo boost. So because bikes can turbo boost, you can move your 24 inches, which is, you just have to avoid any kind of difficult or dangerous terrain. You're allowed to, not allowed to go through that. But, and if you're moving normally, if you move through any difficult terrain, it counts as dangerous, so you could die. But, you know, sometimes it's useful, but usually you just, you just fly around it. But yeah, 24 inches, as long as you move at least 18 inches, it works for all bikes and jet bikes, you get a three plus cover save. So you get a four plus cover save all the time. Turbo boost, you get a three plus cover save. I mean, orcs with saves, what the heck is this? I don't even know, but just use it to your advantage. It's, it's fun. I almost don't like it because it's almost like I'm relying on those saves now because they cost so many more points. I'd rather that the bikes cost half as many points and they still just had a normal save. And then you just, but, you know, use what you got. So you can run around, yeah, so assess that you want to keep them, when there's only three guys, you definitely want to keep them out of combat almost always, and just, you know, hit vehicles is more like mechanized assault. And they can run around, they can turn boost, and then it distracts other squads, and so it's also very good distraction, a bit expensive. But they always have that cover save, so people are always reluctant to shoot at them. Next squad, um, most commonly seen, I would say, or should be, at least, is you will bring like between six to eight of course, non power claw boss pool in there. And six to eight has a little more, more little liberty because any kind of like weaker vehicle, strength five, and so you can wound um, armor 11. And so that's like a lot of the weaker vehicle or side armor, especially back armor. And so you can just, you can shell out a lot of shots, you can cause a lot of saves on the power armor marines and lots of things. And you can just skirt, they're big enough that you can spread out and cover guys behind that are moving up. And so if you're bringing more of a green tight army, having all those bikes spread out in front, they're a lot more tough because they're a bigger squad. They can take a few shots and then everything behind gets a covered save as well. And so it's a lot more efficient for your bikes to get shot instead of all your boys in the back with no saves at all. And so, so they can get in the combat because they're the ones that are gonna deal the most damage in close combat. Usually, unless you're being a Wazdak army where everything is bikes. <clears throat> but we'll get to that. So, bikes, they're strong, grr, the normal boys, but in close combat, they're just like a regular shooter boy. Like, you know, so just remember that. And so before you charge in, think, Am I really going to do that much damage, or should I just hold back, shoot them, kill a few more guys, then charge and kill them, and then I'm not stuck in combat, I'm not losing as many bikes, and then I can move on? Or, is this unit so good at shooting that I can't afford not to charge, even if we're stuck in combat for a long time? Is, am, I, am I going to get shot up more than, than if I, I let them? So it's, figure it out. <laughs> I'm sure you can do well. And so like, Okay, vehicles. When you're, when you're shooting vehicles, it can be super useful. A lot of people don't realize how effective bikes can be at killing vehicles. Okay, so turbo boost, first round, up the side of the board. Just, whoosh, actually, I'm gonna show you guys. 